with all the different trades, it's very important that as the materials come on site, they're properly protected until they actually get placed into the home. That's true of masonry. We're seeing a couple of different job site photographs here, and uh, they're pretty good in some ways. At least there's an attempt here made to cover the material. Uh, that can be important, making sure that you control the amount of moisture that's in the body of the brick. Uh, comes into play down the road in several ways as far as staining is concerned and tooling is concerned. So covering the brick stack is very important. But if you notice in the slide, this is at the end of the day. The photograph was taken after the masons left. The mortar's uncovered, possibility of rain. The sand is in a low spot. I don't know how well that shows up in the photograph, but so are the brick. And although though the brick are wrapped, you'll notice that they're setting directly on the ground. Brick are very porous. And so if they're sitting in a low place, they're going to wick up moisture from the ground, as will the sand pile. Who knows what's in the clay or the dirt underneath that brick stack? What type of salts, what type of minerals that could later after the brick had been laid on the house, leach out to the surface and cause staining problems or other problems in durability. So again, getting those brick either maybe up on a pallet or at least up on high ground would be wise. As those brick wick up water sitting in those cubes, only the bottom two or three rows get wet. The reason the side of this building looks so bad is because the material was not properly cared for as it was delivered on site. There are places in this slide all on one level across the side of this building where the mortar joints go from dark to light to dark again and back to light, all on the same row. This is what causes this type of stain. When you're tooling mortar joints, if you tool the brick when they're too wet, when the mortar's too wet, the joints lighten. If you wait till they're too dry, then they're much darker. So remember in the slide we just looked at previously how some of the brick in that cube were wet and some dry. When the laborers or the tenders bring the brick to the masons, many times they'll cut one strap of brick and they'll place about five tongs between a mortar board, the next five between the next mortar board, and so on. So can you see that by doing it that way, they'd have maybe five cubes or five tongs full of dry brick and then some wet ones and so forth right on down the line. And as the brick are laid then, wet, dry, wet, dry, but tooled all at the same time, then you have staining problems such as you see here. So just some common sense covering and getting the brick and sand piles up out of low-lying areas can really make a big difference in how the project looks at the end.